Get all of his content at 24-7 Sports and follow him on Twitter at BMarcello. He has Brandon Marcello with us now on the Johnston RVCenter.com hotline. Welcome back, Brandon. How are you today? Doing good. We're uh, still 24 hours away from more football, so I'm, I'm a little sluggish. I want more football. <laughs> Understandably. And you had, a, you had a heck of a weekend. I know you were both Atlanta games. Am I right about that? Yeah, I picked uh, two great games, didn't I? <laughs> 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 yeah, but you got to, I mean, you, so I'll ask you this way because this has been a little bit of a discussion. A lot of people are wondering if Clemson measures up to Ohio State and Alabama and Georgia. You saw them with your own eyes. Are Clemson and Georgia, do they look like they're on the same level right now? No. No. <laughs> Negative. I, no, I mean, Clemson, you know, listen, they're going to change quarterbacks. They're going to. They're going to have to. They're, they're, their hand's going to be forced here in a few weeks. Uh, my bet is, is by that week four, K. Klubnik is the starting quarterback there, and DJ Uwe Angolale is on the sideline holding a clipboard. It's very clear that offense is a lot different. Uh, with DJ out there and with Kate out there. But the problem with Clemson is it goes beyond the quarterback. They don't have the receivers that get separation, and they don't have an offensive line that provides enough pass protection to allow the quarterback to stand back there uh, without being harassed and being able to throw the ball downfield. So Clemson's just not going to be an explosive offense this year, no matter who the quarterback is. K. Klubnik will give them the best opportunity. Um, they'll probably still win the ACC. They might get into the playoff, especially now that the Pac-12 uh, decided to self-implode before uh, the timer even ran out because they're the MacGruber of college football. <laughs> uh, Clemson is just its not top four material right now, and I don't think it would be even with, you know, uh, Peyton Manning back there at quarterback. They don't. They just don't have the the personnel around the quarterback to to win a title on the national level this year. Uh, Brandon, I don't know how you felt. I, I thought Georgia would take at least a step back, losing 15 guys to the NFL. I know Kirby's got enough talent to restock. Um, look, the defense looked as good as last year's. I'm not sure that's going to be the case, but I feel pretty confident the offense is going to be better this year for Georgia. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the defense, I, I thought, would come in and be great. It's just that the depth, they don't have the depth that they had last year when, I mean, goodness gracious, they're rotating guys so much. That's what made them so deadly is that they didn't have any drop-off and they rotated so much. And I mean, some players were getting 20, 25 snaps a game, and it felt like they were out there maybe like 45 because you look at their stats and go, how'd they do that in 25 snaps? Because they're rotating so much and guys are so fresh. Georgia can't quite do that this year. Also, let's keep in mind, like, if you go back and watch the tape of Oregon in that game, oh, my God, their defense is bad. Missing tackles, taking bad angles, and that's something that popped up near the last half of last season for Oregon. And you kind of thought, okay, they can clean this up, just some focus issues, something going on there. Nope. Dan Landing comes in, and it's the same stuff going on that's bothering them defensively. Um, that that, that program is going to, I think – have a tougher time these next couple of years trying to get back into the national race at Oregon. Georgia, on the other hand, of course, I think they are the the number two team in the country right now. I think a lot of people are overreacting even more beyond that, saying they're number one. But um, until I see them have to get into a game that's actually a game in the second half, I'll hold out judgment about saying they're number one, but just because I know they're not as deep as they were last year on defense, and that needs to be tested. Uh, playing off Oregon in this sense, Alabama goes to Texas this weekend. It's a Texas home game, and, and Texas may be better than Oregon. How important is it for Sark, say, if you can't win the game, how important is it for them to look more like Notre Dame losing to Ohio State than Oregon losing to Georgia? It seems like this is a big game for Sark, just to look really competitive. Forget moral victories. I understand you want to win every game, but if they if they look like Oregon, that is a bad sign, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. They need to be competitive in this game to get some momentum going forward as they continue to recruit the way they are. And then, of course, as they try to approach the SEC here in the next couple of years. And, you know, I was looking at some of these notes that we've got from our production crew and you know, Texas has only been an underdog by more than 17 points twice since 2000, um, including this game. 
Uh, the last game they were this big of an underdog was against Baylor in 2015. They were a 21-point underdog on the road, and they won that game. Texas upset Baylor. So it's just a rare place that Texas is in, even though they've been struggling for the last decade. And Sark needs them to keep this within two touchdowns because anything beyond two touchdowns, it's just going to be seen as a wash. And, oh, I told you so, Texas – is nowhere near to being back. They need to keep it within a couple of touchdowns to get some momentum going, not just for this season, but on the recruiting trail so they can sell that to players. Because, I mean, you lose at home to anybody by three touchdowns, you're going to take a massive hit uh, when you're trying to sit down in homes of recruits during the season. Brandon Marcello is with us at Marcello on Twitter. 24-7 Sports is where you follow all of his content. He's on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Look, Billy Napier faced, and he did so well, faced a great challenge last week with Utah, but it's a different challenge this week for him. And I'm fascinated, Brandon, to see how he handles getting his team back to earth against a classic underdog, a team that wears that underdog patch as as a sense of pride with Kentucky. This is a tough spot for him after what they did last week, and they look so good doing it. Yeah, you know, to me, if this game comes down the fourth quarter and it comes down to a defense having to step up to get a stop, I trust Mark Stoops and Kentucky to do that, even on the road in the swamp against a revitalized Florida program right now. Because, listen, I know that game was tight against Utah and Florida's defense did come up late. Cam Rising made a mistake there. They shouldn't even call that play the way they did, throwing there the goal line, but – I trust Stoops to kind of get them uh, in the right space um, if that game's tight in the fourth quarter. And I do think this is going to be a tight game. I think it's going to be a tight, low-scoring game. I give the edge to Florida just because Kentucky's dealing with all these suspensions and people sitting out and everything. Um, and I'm not – I am not. I don't know. I'm just not sold still on Will Levis as a quarterback. I know everybody keeps talking about him being a – some people say maybe he's a first-round guy even. I, I just – I don't see it. That's just me. Um, and going on the road, I know Kentucky's had success here recently, won two of the last four against Florida after losing 17 straight. But um, I like Florida in this one. But if it is tight in the fourth quarter and it's going to come down to a couple defensive series, couple defensive stops, I, I, I trust Kentucky to do that on the road even more so than I do against than I do Florida. Uh, Haynes King, he's only got 70 career attempts, um, you know, through multiple picks again this past weekend. Where would you put Haynes King in the peck, pecking order of SEC quarterbacks right now? I put him right about in the middle. Um, you know, he's better than what he showed in the opener. You know, they're, they're playing so many young guys. I know that sounds like an excuse, but they are playing a lot of young guys, redshirt freshmen and freshmen. Um, he, he's a gamer. He'll get it done for them. They need to continue to try and stretch the field. Um, that's a good thing to see from Texas A&M because that's been the knock on Jimbo Fisher throughout his career, really, but especially at Texas A&M. And if they continue to do that, and I think Haynes King will get his confidence back a little bit and get it rolling. And maybe by the end of the year, he's like a top four quarterback in the SEC, maybe top five, which sounds kind of crazy. Like, man, that's not very high. But, man, you look at the talent in this league. It's insane. I mean, goodness gracious. Uh, saw a video earlier on Twitter today of Spencer Rattler throwing a ball like 45 yards downfield on the move, on the on the money. It's just insane the amount of talent hmm. at quarterback in this league this year. Yeah, absolutely. The very buttoned up uh, Brandon Marcellus with a, for a couple of more questions here. Love the look here today. Uh, well, it's my top button, button because underneath I have like a red shirt on. So it just looks bad. Yeah, uh, I'm all right with that. No, I, I yeah. like that. I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's a very uh, old school Montreal Alouette combination there. I like that. Um, Hendon Hooker. It's a uh, it's put up or shut up time this weekend, right? This starts yeah. this starts the campaign. This is a tough test at Pittsburgh. I don't think a lot of Tennessee fans think so, but this is going to be a pretty good football game. Yeah, I mean, it was great last year in in Knoxville and uh, came down to the to the end there. I think uh, the Tennessee though. I, I think Pitt's in for a rude awakening, to be honest, in, in this game, even though it's on the road for Tennessee. I think I think Tennessee's got all the weapons this year to go in there and win by two touchdowns. Not very impressed with what Pitt's doing. Do not like the changes they're making with the offense and trying to run the ball more. And 
I, I like Tennessee in this one. I like I like them big. I, I just do. And I know Tennessee fans are super amped up and they think that the same thing, but they've got some reason to believe that because I, I really do think they're going to go in there and cruise. By the way, Brandon, as you leave us, for the sickos like us, how good is this late night slate this week? Yes. Baylor BYU might be the best game of the day, 9 15. Oregon State, Fresno State, don't sleep on that one. It's basically a pick them at 9 30. And I think Mississippi State. At Arizona is a tougher game than many would think on FS1 at 10 o'clock. The, the late slate rains this week. Yeah, absolutely. Mississippi State, Arizona is really intriguing because I think Arizona looks like a bowl team right now. They've got the personnel from the transfer portal and recruiting. Jed Fish is doing a good job out there, and he's really taking advantage of the uh, absolute dumpster fire that Arizona State has turned into the last two years um, off the field. And um, you know, BYU, Baylor, two legit to me, top 15 teams, and we're going to find out a lot. BYU has a lot of opportunities this year at home. They get, yep. they get Baylor at home. They get Arkansas at home. Some really interesting non-conference matchups for them to really get put on the map here, and those are all very winnable for them. And I love watching games in Provo. I mean, I I've never too. been. Spot, it's, yeah. a, it's a bucket list place to go watch a game. I don't know if you've been, Brandon. But that atmosphere, I love watching BYU home games. That's fun. Yeah, listen, they, they party different out there. I mean, you even see the U Utah student section. I mean, it's crazy out there. It's uh, They don't get enough love out there. East Coast bias, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, man, it's I, I'm with you. I, I'd love to go to a game there. All right, he is Brandon Marcello at B Marcello, and also 24-7 Sports is where you get all of his content. Thank you so much, Brandon. Always fun talking with you. All right, see you guys. Enjoy the weekend. All right, buddy, you too. Take care. Brandon with us on the Johnston RV Center.com hotline. <laughs>